Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Last Raider, and we are back with another video. <clears throat> and as the title concludes, Ginger Side is real at Disney. I mean, you take a look here at this picture of 101 Dalmatians, 1961. Anita and Roger. They're both. Let's let's just take a close look here. Okay, they're they're pretty well a couple, pretty much. You know what you'd expect Europe to be back in those days. And mind you, this is this is in the '60s. And you you take a look at this. This is the classic. It's what we all grew up with. But Anita is a redhead, and unfortunately, with Hollywood. Redheads are evil. They are a dying breed. Any character, any person, any movie, any TV show, if there is a redhead in it, they are going to go in there and destroy it. They, they have to change that character from being redhead, ginger, to being black. It's a denial of the Irish, or... <clears throat> yeah, the Irish, the red-headed Irish. It's, it's sitting up there, you know, oh, hey, you know, we hate the Irish, so we're going to just turn them all into black people. Make everything better. It's stupid. Well, they're doing this now with 101 Dalmatians. Anita and Rogers have now been changed, despite the fact that the movie took place back in the 60s. And this is for the new Cruella, which... <laughs> uh, I, I've seen the trailer for this movie... And my wife has seen the trailer for this movie and she she just saw the trailer and she goes, are they, do they want children to hate dogs? Then she asked another question. Why is PETA not getting pissed about this? I mean, this is right up PETA's alley. PETA should be getting out there and pitching a fit because Disney is making a movie about a woman who wants to kill dogs and wear their fur. This is right up Peta's alley. You can tell when someone's lost the lost their sh lost the shit when uh, they don't even do what they're supposed to be doing. This is why I tell people all the time: don't give money to Peta. But you see here, you've got this complete destruction. We we have to change white characters to black all the time with Hollywood, and it gets boring. All right. Oh, we got to make a black Captain America. Oh, we got to make a black black Barry. Uh, what is it? Alan West or what it was. We got to make a black Impulse. We got to make a black Iris West or Wally West. Um, can't make Barry Allen black because we know exactly what would happen if they made Barry Allen black. They they didn't have the balls to do that nonsense. But any other character that they think they can get away with changing the race of the character. Uh, and it's like, it is like just some guy says, you know, these are I these characters are iconic. And Anita and Roger, I would say, are iconic characters. You just don't get the feels as you would with this because you're sitting back like, oh, well, um, who are these people? Oh, this is Anita and Rogers? Oh, really? Huh. Don't don't know much about these people all of a sudden. They're not familiar. And it's one of those turnoffs to the audience. <clears throat> like just some guy says, they're iconic characters. It doesn't take much when someone you can go anywhere in the world. And he, he was talking about this with Black Superman. Where they wanted to make a black Superman. You can go anywhere in the world and say Superman. Or tell someone, draw me a picture of Superman. Or show me Superman. They're going to pop up a picture of a white dude, blue eyes, bl jet black hair with a spit curl. That's the character you're going to get. That's that's what the, the iconic image of Superman is going to be. If you tried to bring it up as a black guy and say, no, this is Superman, they'd look at you like you were a retard. Uh, one of the things that got me was when I took a Spanish class in college, they actually told me, this This is how iconic Superman is. One person in the class said, uh, so how do you say someone's, like a superhero's name? Like, do you say, the Spider-Man? 
And he said, no, in Chile, his name is just Spider-Man. Yeah, that's the same with Superman or Batman. They don't say La Batman. They say Batman, period. They use the English connotation of it. They use the English uh, phrasing. They don't try to translate it over into Chilean because it's iconically an English-American character. So they don't change it. In other countries, these characters, their names are the same as they are in the English connotation because it is more of a Western culture. When you go in there into culture and start trying to change it back or try to change it into what you think it should be, you throw the audience off. It's kind of like um, being in a Bethesda game and you're really immersed in the game, you know, you're really playing the video game, you're really immersed, and all of a sudden the dude's head grows like 600 feet all up into the sky, and you're like, oh wow, that's immersion breaking. <laughs> it's like, your immersion is, is broken. You're, 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 the way that you've been lost into the game completely is annihilated at that point, and it takes time to build that back up. And that's why this woke shit doesn't sell very well with Hollywood. And I think... Cruella is second right now to The Quiet Place 2, which The Quiet Place, the first movie, was pretty traditional. The man was masculine and a protector of the family. The mother was the feminine, motherly, loving character. And so A Quiet Place 2, that's what's happening now. It's the same thing. And The Quiet Place 2 is doing really good because it's, it's smartly written. It's not about race. It's about a family trying to survive in a world full of monsters. You don't have time to worry about racial shit. We don't have time to worry about sexual shit. Because, hey, you're going to get eaten or ripped apart or whatever the hell them things do in The Quiet Place. Uh, your life is on the line. And when your life is on the line, you don't have time for petty bullshit. And that's what a lot of this is. It's pointless bullshit. That is only there to get points. It's kind. Of, I kind of saw the quartering this morning. He put out of a a, uh, a meme, which had Norman Osborn down there, and it said companies when Pride Month comes around. It's got Norman Osborn where he's talking to Spider Man. He's he's saying, you know, I'm somewhat of a homosexual myself, and it it is companies. That's they do this every year. It's a joke at this point. It's nothing but a joke. I often look at it and I'm like, because oh, I'm so tired of virtue signaling. <laughs> it, it's cringe at this point. It's like some, at this point, companies coming out there putting up gay pride flags on things to me is just, well, I got black friends. That's what it sounds like to me. Well, we, we're, we, have, we have rainbows. We're gay. We, we like gays. We're rainbowy. You know what? Um, maybe just treat people with respect and just don't give a shit. Maybe that would have been better. But this is how Hollywood always works. It's also the point on Invincible because I found this kind of interesting. Some people who haven't seen Invincible, spoiler alert. In Invincible, there is actually, later on in the comics, after Amber and Mark break up, and this is the funny part because... With Hollywood, they have to change races all the time. They've already swapped Amber's race in um, Invincible from a blonde-haired chick to a black chick who's pretty insufferable right now. <laughs> the funny part is, I don't, I don't think this book is going to get is going to show up because in the comic book, Amber, who's a white chick, after leaving Mark, she gets a new boyfriend and he wrecks. Her face, and not in a sexual manner. Like you, see, she gets half her face brutalized about like the end of the Invincible first season, where Omni Man just beats the shit out of him. Half her face looks like that. I mean, you can tell she got. She looks like she got hit by a truck in the comics. Now, here's the thing: you change the chick to a black chick, and she's gonna get beat up. She's going to get physically abused. Here's the problem. Is she going to get physically abused by a white guy? And you're going to show a white guy beating on a black chick? Are you going to make black guys look bad by making them hit the chick? How is this going to go down? All right? Because here's what Hollywood does. And this is, this is ultimately what hurts them in the long run. 
They are fearful of pissing off the woke people. So they pull this shit. They go from decent redhead, and they take all the redheads and make them, you know, black all the time. Problem with this. If you don't know what's happening later in the story, or what is going on, that's going to cause a whole lot of problems. Same thing with, uh, what is it? Red Sonja. Red Sonja, they got a chick who is more African descent to play Red Sonja now. Or she's supposed to. It's the woman that played the, the villain in Ant-Man 2. Problem is, if you know anything about the High Adventure era, and you know it, it's actually based on... It's supposed to be before recorded history, or at least a time in... It's supposed to be what's going on in the world, or a fictional version of the world during the time of uh, you know Genesis and Exodus within the biblical texts. There's a lot of the same clans and peoples are there, and they're in the same areas. The Sumeria, a lot of people don't realize it, but there is actually a group known as, there's Sumerians. Uh, there, there are groups known within there. I think the Chaldeans are mentioned in Hyrulean area, and they were actually a group, they were actually a tribe of Philistines that operate in the land of Canaan. There's also Canaanites. Um, Red Sonja, if you know where she comes from, is around the Caspian Sea up, kind of right underneath around, you know, in the Hungarian Russia area, meaning she'd be pretty damn white, and they're going to make her a black chick. And the woman that they're picking to be Red Sonja would be more of a I think it's Kishan, I think is the term. I'm not sure. It's been so long since I've since I've studied up on high on high adventure lore and everything. <laughs> I really in lore. Uh, it's been a while since I've studied up on that shit. But you should have seen us when we were playing. And yeah, y'all should have seen me when I was playing Conan Exiles. I was going through all this fucking lore, and my friends were like, "Dude." Really, you gotta you gotta chill on the lore. We liked it the first hour and a half, but you're gonna have to stop. But anyway, yeah, that's ultimately what's happening here is they're they're making these mistakes and it's off putting to the audience. Especially when you consider how the BBC is doing it. They're just changing out white people for black people and putting them in, you know, like Achilles is a big bad black dude. Uh no, Achilles was Greek. Alright? <clears throat> they want to change how history looks. They want to make it out like the predominant group of people were out there because Hollywood, entertainment, they're scared to death of offending these weirdos online who are not going to buy your product anyway. And you're going to end up making massive mistakes. You're going to insult the original audience that helped build the fandom. And when they don't buy your stuff, the people that were before, they're still going to find problems with it. Going back to Red Sonja, I absolutely promise you. In fact, hold up a minute. Yes, the bunnies look good, I know. We're going to end up with this. This is the chick that's going to play Red Sonja. This is what she's probably going to look like. In a frumpy fat suit, pretty much. Designed to look like armor. This is not what Red Sonja is going to look like which would be infinitely more appealing. Anyway, folks, I'm The Last Raider. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.